For indoor studio shoot, like in a room with moderate lighting for making YouTube videos, should I prefer the Canon M6 uh, or perhaps uh, some other setup? Funny that you ask. This is a um, YouTube studio, essentially, coming at you from Dallas. I'm from Houston. I'm up here on a little work project. And as you can see, um, in terms of what the space looks like, um, we got some high ceilings, we got some black drops, we got some lighting. Uh, I've got a close up um, or more or less a medium close up. I got a, essentially a medium shot and then I got a side profile close up right over here. So um, in addition to that, sometimes uh, if I'm featuring uh, either myself or anybody else in the project, uh, maybe as part of an interview or whatnot, what I do is I might come over here and I'll have those two cameras. One's a G85 right over there and then a GH4 uh, as a close up so that we can do, we can cut back and forth. I, you'll notice something though. This right here is a Canon EOS M6 Mark II. I've got uh, Sony ZV E10, one, two, and third one all the way over there, the one that's getting the side profile close up. Then I got two Lumix cameras. And I also have this Lumix camera, which is the GH5. And I'm a little sad about this one particularly because as you can notice, uh, the camera uh, lens mount broke. Um, I had the camera in the bag with the lens mounted on there and uh, the bag slipped. And as a result, the lens got busted. So I gotta find a replacement for that. Just a side note, have you ever busted the ring? And if you have, uh, was, it, uh, was it an easy fix for you or not? I ordered a ring, so hopefully it comes in time. But anyway, to answer your question, back to the question of should you use a Canon, a Sony, or should you use a Panasonic? Why am I recording with the Sonys and not with the Canon? Number one factor has to do with 30 minute record limit. When the GH5 got busted, I was reminded as to the limitations when it comes to uh, recording any sort of video when uh, you don't have, uh, when you have the 30 minute limit because all the other cameras are rolling, not a problem. This one, I gotta set a timer on here and I gotta make sure I hit the, uh, pr press the record button. And in addition to that, after about an hour of continuous or 45 minutes of continuous recording, the Canon tends to overheat in 4K specifically. Now, do I use the Canon for YouTube videos that are not in a controlled setting sort of type of production as we have here? Yeah, I do. How do you get over the 30 minute record limit? Well, what I do is I use something called OBS Studio where I connect the Canon through an HDMI cable using an Elgato Cam Link 4K, uh, which connects to the USB and then records the footage directly through the HDMI output on the Canon onto the computer. So I don't even have to transfer. It's decent quality, it's full 4K quality, no overheating, I can record forever. In that context, because this camera is typically my live streaming camera, it is my at home sit, uh, mounted to my desk camera, as well as my family photos camera, the Canon is perfect for that. However, would I use the Canon outside of that context for long form video? No, I don't recommend it. Even in a setting right now, like, uh, like the Sonys are my primaries for this spot, for the hours and hours and hours videos that I have recorded uh, with the Sony. I've not had any issues in terms of overheating and whatnot so long as I got the appropriate lenses. I've had one instance of overheating is because I had a bad adapter. I had a Viltrox focal reducer, replaced it with a Metabones, haven't had any issues since. So if you're going to be recording videos that are long form and you want something small, affordable, compact with uh, you know, decent uh, picture uh, image profiles and things like that, Sony all day. That's all I gotta say, Sony all day. Uh, and also if you want the option of reliable autofocus, and right now I'm not using autofocus at all. I've got a Canon 80 to 200 millimeter EF, F2.8 lens mounted via Metabone Speed Booster 
on this close up or medium close up. Then I've got a 85 millimeter F1.8 Canon FD adapted in the slightly wider shot. Here I have a Canon FD 135 millimeter um, adapted. And this is the image that you're getting. And it's like, you got a black backdrop. Um, I'm a picture profile 10. Um, and it allows me to grade. I have a Sigma lens, a Sigma 18 to 35. I can mount it on any one of these Sony's with the appropriate MC11 adapter, and it works flawlessly for the most part. Would I recommend Sony? Yes. In what instance would I recommend the Canon over the Sony, right? Uh, or even the Panasonic itself. The perk of the Canon is that uh, there's a lot of old cheap lenses. They may not be the best quality lenses, some are great quality lenses, but if you want autofocus, like for example, right here, I'm using a 14 to 20 millimeter Taukina F2 lens. You don't have something like that on the, uh, on the Sony or the Panasonic, but this lens can be adapted to both of these. But if you want to take advantage of the autofocus, it'll work on the Canon. Um, for, and, and for that reason, there are a lot of specific type of lenses that are on the Canon, or that would work well uh, without, without any problem, flawlessly on the Canon. If I were to choose something that requires the least amount of work, where I don't want to be necessarily editing and I want the picture to look good, then what I would do is I would highly recommend that you get the Canon and ensure that whatever recording that you do of the video, you don't do it on the camera. You do it on the laptop through OBS via the Camlink Elgato 4K, or you get yourself something like an Atomos Ninja V or V Plus, um, while also purchasing the H.265 upgrade for $100. So you get the monitor, and the, the every, I always recommend getting a monitor, right? Get yourself a nice big monitor like this one, um, uh, so that way you, you're always in focus and you can see yourself. Same thing like this. As a monitor, it's actually a little expensive. It's like $600. If you get the hard drive caddy and the recording ability becomes close to a thousand, it might cost you 900 to 1100 bucks for the whole thing. That's more than the camera and uh, camera of in this case. But that's when you're thinking about getting a system. It's not just about a Canon or a, or a Sony or a Panasonic. And what does the recording system contain? It contains a camera, it contains a lens, it contains a monitor, it contains HDMI cables, it, records, it contains recording capability. In this case, either SD cards or it's going to be uh, whatever you're going to be recording on. It contains hard drives, it contains lights, it contains tripods. You'll notice, like, yeah, I got a bunch of cameras in this room, right? And I used all of them for uh, the production of a class. This whole thing is more important than the camera body itself. The camera body is probably the least, it's probably the most important thing in terms of the first thing that you get, and it's probably the least important thing in terms of the thing that stays with you the longest. <laughs> Does that make sense? The things that stay with you the long time are all of the accessories. You've got something simple like those plants in the back, <laughs> right? Uh, like the, those plants add a certain type of ambiance, little lights, a uh, sound blanket right here to reduce the echo as best as possible. All of these things are the things that matter. But if you're just starting out and you don't have any of these accessories, the first thing you're gonna get is a camera and camera body. To get started, sure, get the Sony. I would. But if I were building out an entire system, it doesn't matter. Building out an entire system, we're gonna be creating content for the long term, where you see yourself maybe uh, building out accessories and things like that, then it really doesn't matter whether you get yourself a Canon or a Sony or a Panasonic. What matters is the system that you're building around it, because again, it's gonna be the first thing that you get and probably also the first thing that you get rid of, that you upgrade after you build out your system. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you soon.